वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल थर्टी टू हैबिटी टूडे यूल बी स्टडिंग जिंजाइवा सो दिस इज अ डायग्राम ऑफ जिंजाइवा फर्स्ट वी विल लर्न द पार्ट्स दिस इज इनामल एंड दिस इज सीमेंटम ओके एंड दिस इज द जिंजावल सल्कस दिस वी शेप्ड सल्कस इज द जिंजावल सल्कस एंड द इपिथीलियम विच लाइन्स द जिंजावल सल्कस इज कॉल एज द क्रेविकुलर और सर्क्युलर इपिथीलियम एंड दिस एरिया दिस इज alveolar bone this is the crest so corresponding to this alveolar crest this soft tissue part of the gingiva is called the free gingival groove and the part from the tip of the gingiva till the free gingival groove is called as the marginal gingiva and the part of the gingiva which is attached onto the bone look here all of this part is attached to the bone this is called as the attached gingiva after attached gingiva there is a junction called as the mucogingival junction and after mucogingival junction this the rest of the part is called as the alveolar mucosa and this and over this side it is called as the junction epithelium here it is junction epithelium present okay so this gingival groove uh, that is the free gingival groove is present only in 50% of the cases whereas the mucogingival junction it remains constant throughout life so what is gingiva gingiva is that part of the oral mucous membrane that covers the alveolar process of maxilla as well as mandible in oral cavity only the gingiva as well as the hard palate these two are keratinized and the rest are non keratinized but in case of the interdental papilla in case of the interdental papilla in the anterior portion it is keratinized whereas in the posterior portion it's non keratinized okay so the gingiva and the hard palate are keratinized and in case of the interdental papilla anterior interdental papilla is keratinized whereas the posterior one is non keratinized and in case of gingiva this marginal gingiva as well as the attached gingiva these both are keratinized okay in case of mar gingiva marginal gingiva as well as attached gingiva are keratinized and what about the circular epithelium this is non keratinized circular epithelium is non keratinized but this circular epithelium has the potential to keratinize when exposed to the oral cavity whereas in case of the junctional epithelium it is lined by stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium okay now one more thing about the interdental papilla the anterior interdental papilla it appears triangular in shape whereas the posterior one it appears call shaped or tent shaped okay so this is the shape of the anterior as well as the posterior interdental papilla now moving on to the gingival sulcus okay about this gingival sulcus we will study about the depth depth in three conditions 1 2 and 3 first condition is ideal condition in ideal condition the depth of gingival sulcus is 0 mm that is there is no sulcus whereas in clinical conditions it is 2 to 3 mm but it can also vary from 0 to 6 mm on an average whereas histologically histologic depth is 1.8 mm okay now moving on to the attached gingiva attached gingiva is keratinized attached gingiva is maximum in in the maxillary incisor region okay and how much it is 4.5 to sorry 3.5 to 4.5 mm so the attached gingiva is maximum in maxillary incisor region that is 3.5 to 4.5 mm whereas it is minimum in mandibular 
premolar region which is 1.8 mm. Now moving on to the histologic features. It consists of three parts. First is epithelium. Second is basal lamina or the basement membrane. And the third is the connective tissue. So epithelium is made up of four layers. First one is stratum basale. Then stratum spinosum. Third is stratum granulosum. And the fourth is stratum corneum. How can you remember all of these layers? Just remember BSc. You know of the degree Bachelor's of Science BSc. A G in this case, right? B S C and in the middle at G. So what is it? Basal, spinosum, granulosum, and corneum. So this is how you can remember the layers. You won't forget it. Now we will study about all these layers one by one. Starting with the stratum basal. There are some points of uh, each of these epithelium which you need to remember. It is also helpful in your uh, theory, theory exams like in your uh, this uh, final year BDS for perio as well as this is helpful for your MDS preparation. Stratum basal is also called as a germinative layer. Why is it called germinative layer? It is called so because the cells which are present in this layer, cells in this layer, they move upwards. Okay, so this is the cells which are present in the stratum basale, like like this B, S, C, G. The cells which are present in this layer, it moves upwards, and while it moves upwards to the stratum corneum, it differentiates into other layers. So the basale it moves to spinosum, then granulosum, then the finally corneum. So that is why it is called as a germinative layer. And now the second layer which is which is the spinosum this spinosum layer is also called as the prickle cell layer or the horny cells okay so spinosum is also called as the prickle cell layer or horny cells why is it called so because it contains a body which is called as the odd land bodies and what are these odd line bodies they are nothing but lysosomes which contains acid phosphatase okay and they destroy cell organelles and one more important thing is this odd line bodies they are the marker of keratinization so if the question comes which of the following is the marker of keratinization so it's odd line bodies and where is it present it is present in the spinosum layer or prickle cell layer or horny layers and what are these odd line bod bodies they are nothing but lysosomes which contain acid phosphatase and they destroy the cell organelles now moving on to the third layer which is what which is the stratum granulosum third is the granulosum kerato Hyaline granules are present in this layer. So the keratohyaline granules is present in which layer? Granulosum layer. Now moving on to the last layer which is the corneum. Corneocyte cell or just corneocytes are present in this layer. And this corneocyte is the most differentiated 
cell of gingival epithelium. Okay. Now, now I said that the cells which are present in the basal layer they move upwards and they differentiate into the into the other layers that is it goes up till the corneum now when the cell goes to the corneum there are some changes which happen in these cells what are those changes there are particularly three changes the first change is there is progressive flattening of the cells okay there is progressive flattening of the cells along with along with increased prevalence of tonofilaments okay the second change is there is disappearance of nucleus and the third change is there is production of keratohyalin granules now where is this keratohyalin granule present it is present in the granulosum layer granule granulosum spinosum or land bodies what are odland bodies they are the premature sorry they are the marker of keratinization okay you must have heard about orthokeratinized and parakeratinized how do you differentiate it suppose this is i'm writing over here orthokeratinized and over here it is parakeratinized now if complete keratinization takes place that is there is absence of nucleus that is the nucleus is present then it is orthokeratinized but if there is incomplete or partial keratinization in that case there will be pycnotic or small nucleus present nucleus will be present but it will be pycnotic or small whereas in case of ortho it is there is absence so how will you differentiate if the question comes like this question is also asked in mds exams uh, that uh, in which case it is orthokeratinized and which is parakeratinized or they will ask you about this uh, they will tell you about the nucleus is present like this or if it is complete keratinized so whether it is ortho or para so how will you remember it like p is for partial and partial is like incomplete so p partial or p pycnotic p parakeratinized it's simple and the rest other other than this like if this is partial or incomplete it so this is complete so complete is ortho so p for partial p for pycnotic p for paracretinized so this is how you can remember it now moving on to the cells cells of gingival epithelium so there are broadly two types of cells present keratinocyte and the other is non keratinocyte so keratinocyte is our principal cells okay and which is corneocyte and this corneocyte is the most differentiated cell of gingival epithelium okay now the principal cell is the keratinocyte which is the corneocyte and it is the most differentiated cell of gingival epithelium now non keratinocyte is of three types melanocyte Merkel cell and Langerhans cell. Now this Merkel cell is non-dendritic cell. Okay, whereas this melanocyte as well as the Langerhans cell is 
dendritic dendritic cell. Okay, now I'll study about these three cells one by one. About melanocyte, where is it present? First thing, it is present between the stratum basal and stratum spinosum. Okay, between the basal and spinosum. What does it do? Formation of melanin pigment. Simple as that. Now about the Merkel cell. Where is it present? It is present in the deeper layers of epithelium. Okay. What does it do? It contains tactile receptors. And it harbors nerve endings. Okay. So these are the three points of Merkel cells which is it is present in the deeper layers of epithelium, tactile receptors and harbors nerve endings. What about the Langerhans cells? Where is it present? Present in the Supra-basal layer. What does it do? Antigen presenting cells to tactile receptors. Barbic granules are present. Absent in junctional epithelium and they are modified monocytes so these are some of the points which you should remember about these three type of cells you don't need to go into very much detail these points are enough for your presentation in theory exams as well as for mds preparation so what let us revise once again so the cells of gingival epithelium are of two types basically keratinocyte non-keratinocyte keratinocyte is the principal cell which is a corneocyte and corneocyte is the most differentiated cell of the gingival epithelium now non-keratinocyte is, is basically divided into uh, two groups which is non-dendritic and dendritic non-dendritic is merkel whereas dendritic is melanocyte and langerhans cells and this Merkel cell um, is non-dendritic and where is it present? It is present in the deeper layers of epithelium. It contains tactile receptors, it harbors nerve endings, whereas in, whereas in dendritic, the melanocyte is present in between the basal and the spinosum and uh, this what it does is melanin production. And then coming to the Langerhans cells, it is present in the suprabasal layer. It is an antigen presenting cell to the tactile receptors. It contains barbic granules. It is absent in junctional epithelium and it is modified monocyte. So this is all about the cells of the gingival epithelium. So this is all for today. We will continue gingival epithelium in the next video. In that video, we will cover about the oral mucous membrane, its thickness, then the junctional epithelium, basement membrane, connective tissue and all of that. So thank you for watching this video. If you really like this video, so please subscribe to my channel and also don't forget to hit the bell icon so that whenever I post a new video, you will get a notification. Otherwise, you will miss this video. I hope my videos are helpful to you. Please don't forget to share, like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a good day.